Good evening, country lovers, I am, and welcome to Bushel on the Box, the show that does for rotten telly what Sir Lindsay Hoyle just did to his own political career. What a twerp. I'm Gary Bushel, and tonight, because you can't get mugged down memory lane, I'm talking TV adverts. Remember when the ad breaks were something to look forward to? Think of the old Heineken commercial. The water in the Yorker don't taste like what it ought to. Or Leonard Rossiter and Joan Collins in those terrific Cinzano Bianco ads. There was romance, like the flirty posh couple on the gold blend ads, whose mini love story ran longer than most of Liza Minnelli's marriages. There was sex appeal. The Cadbury's flake woman of the 60s did it for a generation of adolescent boys. Nick Kamen in the Levi's Laundrette ad worked a similar trick on a million teenage girls in the mid-80s. Then there were amazing adverts, like Jonathan Glazer's arty Guinness ads with the herd of surfing white horses, and Ridley Scott's nostalgic Hovis boy with his bike. And of course there were the jingles. If you stood on a stage and sang the opening part of an old ad jingle to a crowd my age, I guarantee they would immediately sing back the next line. For example, for mash. Get smashed. They are, they're all out there. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> if you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit. Join our club. There you go. It even works with boom, 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 SO blue. Luton Airport made a star of Lorraine Chase, and who could forget the madness of you being tangoed and the bizarre appeal of a bloke in a gorilla suit drumming along to coming in the air tonight? So what went wrong? You don't need to be a toxic twerp twerp to realise adverts have been ruined by the tiresome modern obsession with wokeness. Today's TV commercials are more about signalling corporate virtues and pushing social engineering than about adding to life's rich tapestry. You couldn't make the milk tray man now. The Guardian have denounced him as a stalker. Seriously. And the very fault of a bloke finding happiness with a cigar named Hamlet would send MPs and civil service nitwits into a nanny state frenzy. That's why no modern ad is as memorable as the smash aliens, the meerkats, Papa and Nicole, or going to work on an egg. <laughs> Adverts in the 2010s painted men as incompetent nitwits. British ads love showing TV mum as competent and caring and TV dad as some turnip brain loser. In the States, the man-hating was even worse. A T-Mobile ad had Sarah Silverman in a delivery room telling a couple, sorry, it's a boy. Be still my aching sides. Anyone remember the Shipham sardine ad in the 60s? Shippums for tea, for tea, for tea. That ruined the Blue Danube for millions. My top seven TV adverts. Mel Sykes, Boddington's. The Philadelphia Cheese Girls. The Andrix Puppy. Peter Kay's John Smith's Bitter. The Rolo advert with the elephant. The Milky Bar Kid. And Shake and Vac. Once you get that tune stuck in your head, it's with you all day. The thing I could never understand about the Boddington ad was the cartoon cattle. They were clearly cows, they had udders, but they had geezers' voices. It must have been the first trans herd. I bet they didn't mind getting milked. I've been watching The Apprentice so you don't have to, and I'm pretty sure I know who Alan Sugar should fire next. Himself. The show is dull, it's repetitive, the contenders are dismal, and his scripted digs are layman and hop along Cassidy. Oh, and by the way, why do they try and kill us he's based in Canary Wolf when his offices are in Loughton? And so's that bloody calf of shame. Do you remember the series Sugar told his apprentices? This is no game show, okay? There isn't going to be some busty blonde outside waiting to hug you so you can sob into her bosoms. Now that's a game show I'd like to be on. <laughs> you definitely get something for a pair on that show. You'd get aroused. Dumb quiz show answers are the gift that keep on giving. 
Recent howlers from the chase include the revelation that Joan of Arc was executed in New Orleans and the Frenchman who called himself the Picasso of Mime was Charlie Chaplin. I'm still chuckling over the time Brad asked, which Welsh singer is the main character in the musical Tom? And a contestant replied, Charlotte Church. Maybe he'd been smoking the green, green grass of home. I'm still loving Peter McKenna's Dublin-based gangland saga, Kin. Vicious bully Bren's release from jail has upset the apple cart for Amanda, who had effectively taken over as boss of the Kinsella crime family. Ruthless Bren has split the family, infuriating his own son Michael and dragging Amanda's 16-year-old son, Bren's grandson, into the family's murderous trade. The cast are terrific, especially Claire Dunn as Amanda and Francis McGee as Bren. Bren's brother Frank, Aidan Gillen, is going quietly loopy and Charlie Cox's hitman Michael is still struggling with his epilepsy. The characters are well drawn, the tension is growing and a bloody clash with the ominous Turkish cartel who want a 90 million euro payoff is inevitable. Can Amanda outsmart the enemy abroad and the enemy within? Still to find out. I'm also quite taken with Birdie, played by Irish singer Maria Doyle Kennedy, fondly remembered for playing Patsy in Father Ted and greedy Vera Bates in Downton Abbey. In any crisis, Birdie can wing it. I don't have to do this, you know. I've got all the money I'll ever need. If I die by tea time. Time, I think, for some CV questions. Would any woman dare to spoon with Yuri Geller? When guns go off at close range and in closed spaces on TV dramas, why aren't people deafened? And shouldn't the Who's Roger Daltrey get a shot of playing Doctor Who? He'd make a fine substitute. You know who makes me mad? Open border, science denying, history hating, tofu chomping, virtue signalling, knee taking, guardian reading, nanny state loving, net zero nitwits. And don't even get me started on Aaron Evans. He's the thickest and most irritating nobody ever to disgrace the celebrity mastermind black chair. Here's a brand new goof from Scottish viewer, Alistair R. Michael Stewart, commentating on Rafe Rovers vs Dundee United, observed, It's a sore one there. He gets dick right in the mouth. A hard act to swallow. Just time for a classic lookalike, Gail Platt from Coronation Street and E.T. If only someone could beam her up. Oi oi, that's your lot. Next time we'll be talking about breathtaking and trying out recipes from the Embarrassing Bodies cookbook, starting with a boil in a bag and a deformed leg of lamb. Cheerio. <laughs>